fall feast, which is the current ministry of Messiah and his body in the earth, is Pentecost, Shavuot, where we receive the fire of God, the anointing of God. The Holy Spirit was sent not upon just, just a few, but he was released in the earth that anyone that bowed their knee to Jesus became a priest. Therefore, he infilled them so that we could become the tabernacle of God and, so, and anoint us upon so that we could function within this tabernacle as a priest, Almighty God. Where are we headed, man? We're headed to the fall feast like a freight train that's out of control. I don't set dates. I think we still have a while. But guys, we need to, we need to wake up because our, our salvation is sooner than when we first believed. And we can no longer play church. We can no longer sit on the sidelines. Either you engage or you're going to get run over either by God or by the devil. That's where we are right now. The fall feast, feast of trumpets. That is the harpazo when the church is caught up. It is the declarations from heaven. In fact, Dr. Michael Heiser in his book, Reversing Hermon, actually shows out of the book of Revelation that he actually shares when Jesus was born. Jesus was not born in December. He was born during the Feast of Trumpets. Oh, that's exciting. When he was born, announcements were being made from heaven. Peace on earth! Goodwill toward men. How's that for an announcement? You have angels show up and start proclaiming what the king is saying. The day of atonement, the valley of Armageddon, when the devil gets his comeuppance and the Antichrist and the false prophet. Tabernacles, the millennial reign. I was shocked. And some of the research that I've been doing that some pre-tribbers have so separated us from Israel that they're literally teaching that we're going to be orbiting the earth in the new Jerusalem and we're not even going to be here during the millennial reign. I say, say what? No, 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 no. You cannot show me the new Jerusalem floating around in space. In fact, it does not even enter into our reality until the first, second, and third heaven are consumed by the fire of God, and it appears in a new reality, a new heaven, a new universe that has never been touched by sin. The devil's never been there. There's no demon ever been there. There's no watcher ever been there. Only those that have bowed the knee to Jesus are going to fill a new universe. How are we going to space travel? I like God's way of doing things. It's called teleportation. You're just there. What are we going to minister? I don't know, but I know one thing. It's going to be cool. Physics are even different in that new heaven and new earth. There's no shadow. You can't make a shadow. There's no sun, but there's light. <laughs> I'm also of the firm conviction that you can get to the Lord's table and eat at his buffet anytime you want, and there will be no obesity in heaven. How many of this feel the anointing right there? Okay. It's going to be good. In the same way, the anointing or the menorah, the sevenfold anointing, shows the kingship and rulership of Jesus. Isaiah 6, 9 tells us, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is giving, and the kingdom shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now in Hebrew, this word shoulder is shahim, which not only means shoulder or shoulder blade, it means the back in general, that upon his back. Now when you see a, a Hebraic prayer shah, a Jewish prayer shah, there are stripes down the back of it. It reminds us, by his stripes we are healed. That it's by his stripes down his back gives him the right to reign and rule as Messiah so that all government will one day come upon him. Now we're going to get into the fun part here. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11, starting in verse 1. Isaiah saw... The sevenfold anointing of Messiah. And if you are in Messiah, this anointing is available to you. It's how you live the Christian life. 
starting in verse 1, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Underline that in your Bible, rest upon him. That's why John, when he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and resting upon him, he said, ah, I found the branch. I found Messiah. And God's called that to be the same thing in our lives. And when the Spirit of God rests upon you, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, to make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, that he should not judge after the sight of the eyes, neither approve after the hearing of the ears. Boy, wouldn't that be something to go into a court and the judge knows everything and it doesn't matter what lies the uh, defending, the defense attorneys spin or, what, or the way the prosecuting attorney would try to twist evidence? The judge says, shut up, I know what happened. I don't need to listen to your debates. I don't need to listen to you trying to get witnesses into dilemmas. No matter if they answer yes or no, they're in trouble. I know what happened, and this is my decree. How many know that's when justice is going to flow? But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with, the, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. There's, that, there's prophecy in here, guys. Jesus began walking in it as Messiah ben Joseph to minister to people. But how many know that's only half the story? You do not get a complete image of Jesus until you see him both as Messiah ben Joseph and Messiah ben David. And for the New Testament believer, the only way that you're ever going to understand what Jesus is doing now in the earth is you have to read the book of Revelation. He's got fire in his eyes that when he speaks, it's like many waters and it flows. The sevenfold anointing of the Holy Spirit starts with the Holy Spirit Himself. Messiah means anointed one. Even within the charismatic movement, few move beyond the stage, which is first stage, which is available of the Holy Spirit. A little dab will do you. You can rondai shandai and think that you have made it. No, you haven't. How many know that there are many manifold graces of God? There are many levels that we can walk in God. And you don't arrive until you can walk like Jesus walked, produce the results that Jesus got, and respond in every situation exactly like Jesus. Until you do with kingdom power, you've not arrived. Ephesians chapter 4 says that the fivefold ministry is there to get the body to the place that we uh, corporately, not just one guy here and one guy there, but corporately, we stand as the full expression of the fullness of Christ. How many know we're not there yet, but we're moving in that direction? Those that are awake, we're moving in that direction. But you know, in the same circles where they speak about talking in tongues and they speak about being filled with the Spirit, little do you ever hear about anointings for wisdom and understanding and power and counsel. In fact, there's a lot of churches I've been to and a lot of things I've seen wisdom left the building a long time ago. How many know God's calling us deeper? The seven anointings of the Holy Spirit flowed perfectly in Jesus. They flowed perfectly in His earthly ministry. And they flow now as He rules and reigns over the universe. If we are to flow in true biblical authority, we must also flow in all seven anointings of the Holy Spirit. You cannot move in biblical spiritual authority without having them. If Jesus couldn't, you couldn't. If we do not, his kingdom will not be properly represented. We are talking about maturity in authority, ministry, Christian walk, and spiritual warfare. Maturity. You know the difference between a kid and an adult? 
A kid will want everything while not expecting to give anything up. How many know that you go to Walmart, you want a big toy or whatever, how many know that they're not going to let you out of their store unless you give up some green? You just can't, regardless of what the socialists say, somebody else has to pay for it. they got to steal from Joe to give to Harry while Harry votes them into office. Margaret Thatcher once said that socialism works as long as they don't run out of other people's money. An adult, we know that any time that we have to we make gain, it's just like working. You have to give up 40 hours a week working and you give your labor and somebody gives you a paycheck. You can't get a paycheck without the sweat of your brow. And as an adult in the kingdom, I cannot move in authority unless I give up some things where the devil had place in my life. I can't move in anointing unless I give up some things. i got to give up the world to get him. But we're still standing as children. We have the world in one hand, and we're trying to grab the kingdom in the other. But the only way that you can ever grab the kingdom, it takes both hands and a full heart to grab kingdom. Now let's look at the seven anointings of the Holy Spirit. Anointing number one, Isaiah 12, 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now one of the typologies that we see in the Word of God or symbolism of the Holy Spirit is a dove. Unless you have ever been around doves, and I've I've not been around a lot of them, but I've read where uh, they're, they're quite common in Israel, and I've, my ministers have went to Israel, and, and uh, there's nothing more peaceful than the cooing of a dove where they've made a nest, let's say, in the eaves of your house. And I remember reading one minister that, that had that happen. He thought, well, what a blessing. Do you know any time there was a loud noise or him and his wife got into an argument, the dove left? Any time he got in the flesh, the dove left? And that dove started convicting him. And the Lord started saying, you know what? How many times can the Holy Spirit not rest just like that dove because you make him feel unwelcome by your attitudes? Messiah was one that he lived a life completely yielded to the Father. I come only to do what he says and what he shows me to do. I've not come to do my own will but his. And because of that, the Holy Spirit could rest upon him. That's the first anointing that we have. That that is preschool learning to move in the kingdom is to become Holy Spirit sensitive. To where I, 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 and all of us get, any preacher that tells you he doesn't get in the flesh already needs to go to the altar and repent. And I, there's guys like, uh, that I love like Henry Groover and so many others. that I mean, they walk far beyond anything I could, you know, Lester Sumrall. And they've even said they've gotten into a flesh a few times and had to repent and do different things. All of us have. But what they do, they're quick to repent. They don't stew about it and have, to have the Holy Spirit work on you nine weeks. What should have took you nine seconds to fix? Spirit of God minded. Walking in kingdom minded. That only when I get to the place that 24-7 the Holy Spirit can rest on me is when I get to moving in the other anointings. Acts 1, it says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We've dealt with this already in this series, the Holy Spirit coming upon you. In fact, one of the greatest types and shadows we see of Jesus and releasing the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit to the church is in the story of Elijah and Elisha. The mantle, the mantle of ministry that Elijah had. Now, Elijah promised Elisha, if you see me going, you're going to, because I mean, Elijah didn't have children. He had a school of the prophets, but he had no children. And so Elisha served as a son to him and when he asked for the double portion he was asking for a birthright because he became a spiritual son and said I have been faithful more than all your other prophets more than all your other I have been faithful to you 
And so as your firstborn son, I want a double portion of what you got from heaven. And as he watched Elijah go in the chariot of fire, wouldn't that have been something to see? Elijah's mantle fell. He took up that mantle and struck the water and said, where is the God of Elijah? And I mean, oh, the water's parted. That is a perfect type and shadow of Acts chapter 2. That we're called to walk in. But guys, are we fully walking in it? No, we're not. And I know there's a lot of ministers like me that are the five-fold ministry. We depend a lot on the anointing to minister. You know, I have been so sick that I could hardly stand up, but you put a Bible in my hand, and it's time to preach. Mary will witness as I have seen the sickness or whatever absolutely leave me. I was, I was sweating cold bullets before I got up here. I get up here, and it all leaves. There have, and then the clarity comes back, and you start making connections under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But what we have never been taught is what is available to all of us is the sevenfold anointing of God to live life. And as we develop it for those, and a lot of times when we're not taught that as ministers, our anointing may be up here. And ministers deal with this all around the world. When they step out of the pulpit, they crash because they have never been taught to develop their personal anointing. That's something all of us need to work on, especially in this day and this hour. Now, I want you to notice something similar here. Well, I've already touched on this, but I want, to, I want to show it to you in the Word. John chapter 1, verse 32 through 34. And John bared record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. It rested upon him. But I knew him not, but that he was sent me to baptize with water. And the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. The same is he that baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that he is the Son of God. Jesus is our example. If I'm going to walk like him, and you're going to walk like him, we've got to walk a life that the Holy Spirit can abide. And for me, that's going to require a lot of changing. For you, that's going to require a lot of changing. It's time to get into the groove of what the Spirit of God is doing in this day, in this hour. We've already dealt with when the baptism holds that power means ability, efficiency, and might, and I, I dealt several lessons with that. Now, in all that we have already shared about the, the body of Christ moving in efficiency, power, and might, would you classify most of the spirit filled community as individuals walking in divine ability, divine efficiency, and divine might? Or do we more resemble the chaos of a nursery gone amok? I think more like the nursery. Anytime anybody try, and there's a, it, it's called the pot full of, of crabs syndrome. And, and I don't eat crab because it's not clean, but I've, I've read stories that whenever they would catch them, they would put them in a, like a big bucket or whatever. And if one crab tries to get out free, the other ones pull him back. That's what happens when you have carnal Christians. You get one getting free, getting on fire from God, they'll get mad at him and try to pull him back in. That's why the only way to true revival is all of us. This pot here we call biblical life. This pot here, all of us have got to say, I want out of the pot and I want more of God and I want revival because then our flesh won't try to put out what God's doing in other people. We'll all be trying to push each other out of the pot or out of the bucket of the devil into the things of God. And that's something that we need to daily encourage ourselves for. We need to wait upon the Lord until the Holy Spirit comes on, on us in power. Once that happens, we need to learn to really walk with the Lord so that He can nurture us, mature us, and release us in the other anointings. The only levels that represent the stages of maturity in the kingdom of God. So the walking in wisdom, might, counsel, all represent mature, more mature levels of walking in God. How much time do I have left? Or 
We're having to reorder our timer for TV. I got six minutes left. I, got, I can do this. If you have not realized it yet, all of these anointings are either about ability to lead or function as a mature leader. One of the things both the body of Christ and the world is crying out for today is real leadership. In fact, in the world, it appears many will just follow anyone if that person appears to be a leader. Doesn't even have to appear, doesn't even have to be one. They just create Hollywood around them to do it. And how many know most of the time the guy that you see on the camera is different than the guy behind the, the when he walks away from the camera? There's been duplicity in so much, especially in politics and in the world. The anointing that flows from the Holy Spirit is not about lording it over other people. They are not about giving the appearance of leadership. These anointings are about becoming and a functioning as a true leader, anointed by God to bring healing, provision, protection, and prosperity of the kingdom of God into the earth. Anointed godly leadership is one of the most powerful weapons in spiritual warfare. Let me say that again. Anointed godly leadership is one of the most powerful weapons in spiritual warfare. And I've lost sight of that over the years. And God is rebrewing that into my being. The golden age of Israel was under the rule of both King David and his son, King Solomon. They ruled over Israel, brought peace, provision, protection, and prosperity in levels never seen before. Can we say of the Federal Reserve that they're piling up gold and silver in the courtyards because they don't have enough room in Fort Knox to hold it? No, because we have lacked godly leadership. Fort Knox is empty. America has no gold. And gold represents in earthly, in earthly things the ability to rule. The second golden rule is he who has the gold makes the rules. And right now it's China and Russia. Well, our cupboards are bare. But it doesn't have to be that way for the body of Christ. In fact, I do not believe that we will see it again at, at that level or in the land of Israel until Jesus is ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. How many know the millennial reign is going to be a hoot? And I'm looking forward to it. These anointings are about providing a spiritual covering for those that God has placed under your sphere of authority. Okay. We see that it's developing the patterns of leadership throughout the Old Testament. You have a covering for your family, and then you can become a captain of 10, a captain of 50, a captain of 100, a captain of 500, a captain of 1,000, or a chief elder in the tribe. No one stepped into that, regardless of what progressives are telling everybody today. You have to grow into positions. None of them are handed to you. You have to pay a price to mature. It can be argued that some that rose up in leadership were destined by God to do so, such as King David. I agree with this. But we also must see many kings in both the northern and southern tribes, which also obviously were destined to become kings, but were very poor and even ungodly leaders. For those poor leaders, it is not a matter of destiny. For those poor leaders, it is not a matter of destiny. For those poor leaders, it is not a matter of destiny. It was a matter of character and maturity. And they didn't have it. Let's say that many of us are called to be captains of 500. Unfortunately, most of us today cannot even cover our own households properly. The truth is we have never been taught how to grow in this type of leadership this training was instilled in the Hebraic culture, but it has been diffused into obscurity in the Western culture. And that's part of the, the purpose of our Hebraic heritage is to replant all these things. It's not about running around with kippahs or talits on and, and, and using Hebrew names all the time. That is, that is a distraction that we do not see in the ministry of the Apostle Paul ministering to the Gentiles. What he taught them was how to get out Babylon, how to grow in God, and how to be a spiritual covering for your home, and how to develop true biblical character and maturity. Because without it, in a, in a society that was antagonistic toward them, kind of like America's becoming today, they could not have survived without mature leadership and spiritual covering in the home. And guys, that's where we need to be today. 
It's not just about having church. It's not just about having a ministry. It's not just about saying, okay, you know, we're going to have these things so that we can go national or international. It's going to be, first and foremost, the survival of the home. Unless we develop it, right now there are, there are things in motion that are actually being exported by America that are destroying the Christian home, that are destroying the whole concept of family, that will destroy any remnant of being able to, because unless the home is right, you cannot move in spiritual authority anywhere else. And what happens when you destroy the home? What happens when you destroy family? You have a society that becomes nothing more than the puppets on somebody else's strings. Guys, that's got to stop. That's got to stop if God's going to do what he needs to do in this day and this hour. God's calling every one of us to seek and be willing to lay down anything in our lives to walk in this kind of anointing. What are we going to have to walk through? What are we going to have to give up? You know, a lot of people ask Mary and I the difference with, with us and, and some others, and what, what God did, God did by His grace. But I mean, when you're in a position that people are trying to kill you, you don't argue what I need, what, I, what can I tolerate giving up. You give up whatever doesn't line up with the kingdom of God because it's a race to get the stuff out of your ship that's sinking the ship before you die in a sinking ship. And what America doesn't realize is our culture is sinking because it, and our homes are sinking because it has been laden with mystery Babylon and concepts that are not of the Word of God that we have bought, that have disenfranchised us from the power of God, that have disenfranchised us from the anointing of God or the authority of God. And without it, we are, we are unarmed spiritually to come against the darkness that is surrounding us. And it's time for it to change in Jesus' name.